In the last webcast, we examined the conformations of linear alkanes, and we saw that the torsional rotation about carbon-carbon single bond was a relatively easy process with a low barrier height. In the case of cycloalkanes, the situation is quite a bit different, and it has to do with the constraints that are imposed by the cyclical connectivity, such as in the examples of the three to six membered rings that you see here. Molecular systems deal with the constraints of cyclical connectivity in different ways that mostly depends on ring size. For example, if you take the molecule cyclopropane, there are only three atoms, and so simple geometry says those three atoms must be constrained to the same plane. That immediately imparts an unideal geometry in terms of bonding angle. Rather than being the ideal tetrahedral angle of 109 degrees, the cyclopropane bond angle is constrained to be about 60 degrees. Larger molecules like cyclopentane have a greater number of degrees of freedom and can deal with the constraints of cyclical connectivity in other ways besides just bending bond angles. Here you can see the puckered conformation of cyclopentane in which four atoms are in approximately the same plane and then the fifth atom lies above that. This is the minimum energy conformation of cyclopentane and it's a conformation that distributes strain over angle bending as well as torsional degrees of freedom. Just how much does it cost a cycloalkane to accommodate the cyclical constraints as a function of ring size. This energetic cost is what we refer to as ring strain, and it's plotted for you here where we're looking at enthalpy as a function of the number of carbon atoms in the ring. Here's how we calculate ring strain values. We begin with a hypothetical calculation that's based on extrapolation of data from linear, unstrained alkanes. We use what's known as additivity principles, it's a form of extrapolation, and we use those values to calculate what a hypothetical heats of formation would be expected to be if there were no strain for the formula CnH2n. That's the formula of a cycloalkane, but it's based on this heat of formation of extrapolated linear alkane data. Then we measure what's shown in blue the en experimental enthalpy of formation for the cycloalkanes. And notice that none of those heats of formation are as low as the values that were calculated from the linear alkane. The difference in those energies is what corresponds to the ring strain that's shown up here. You can see that only in the case of the six-membered ring is there almost no ring strain. The six-membered ring is almost a perfectly unstrained cycloalkane. Very small rings, like the cyclopropane, have about 25 or 30 kilocalories per mole of strain. It drops to zero near the six-membered ring, and then it rises again and slowly falls over larger ringed systems. Let's be a little more quantitative with this idea of angle strain, the idea that bond angles can bend. And as our example, let's take this molecule of propane. The carbon-carbon-carbon angle, represented by theta, is plotted along the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis in this plot is potential energy. How much energy it costs to bend that bond angle away from its ideal geometry. Now the black curve represents that energy as a function of bond angle. The minimum in that curve, about 112 degrees, is the ideal valence angle for the molecule Propane. You might say, why is it not 109 degrees? And the reason is, is because these methyl groups have a size associated with them, and to avoid those methyl groups from being in contact with one another, the molecule opens up that valence angle from 109 to about 112 degrees. Now you can see just how much energy that molecule experiences in expanding it by about 7 degrees, opening it up from 112 to 119, close to the trigonal planar geometry, only costs 1 kilocalorie per mole. And from our study of torsional potential energy, we know that 1 kilocalorie per mole is a relatively small degree. But you can see this curve climbs steeply after that, especially after we're down to into the 122 degree range, so opening it up by 10 degrees. We could also compress it, so on this side, we're expanding that valence angle, 
and over here we're compressing that valence angle and to compress it even down to 100 degrees which is still far away from the 60 degrees of cyclopropane costs us about three kilocalories per mole and this curve is steeply climbing so that you could imagine to get way down here down to 60 degrees which is the geometry needed for the molecule cyclopropane a very substantial amount of angle strain will need to be introduced into the molecule. And in the next webcast, we'll take a look at just how cyclopropane accommodates this ring strain.